Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 24 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, we did a big overhaul to our investor area, which is now a little bit more efficient, but a whole lot prettier. Today, I'm going to be increasing the output for our production island of Lusk, and then also laying the foundation for the next several thousand scholars to arrive. Now, at the end of the last episode, I'd said we we're going to go for a little walk around this area, but I think I'm actually going to leave it until we have a World's Fair event, or maybe we get some sort of festival running, because then all the buildings get draped in banners and flyers, and just a lot greater atmosphere to the area. But I think we'll still just do a quick overview of the area since I never actually really got to because of the length of the time lapse previously. And eagle eyed viewers will notice there's a couple changes since last time as well. And that's namely the topiary gardens. So I said in the previous episode I was trying to get one of these items. And I was trying to get it through the sumptuous botanical exhibition at the World's Fair. Unfortunately, we just got a little unlucky. You know, you draw kind of random items out of that, and we just didn't get the ones I wanted. But turns out I actually had two already in Cape Trelawney. So I brought them over and installed them into our plaza and into the back of the members club here. There's actually six different variants to them. They look quite nice. Just take a quick look, spooling through them here. So I've decided to go for the totalitarian domineering man figure. Because I guess that's Hans von Schlong himself. He is an investor, right? We have He has the same face <laughs> in all of these houses. Uh, so I guess that's him. It just seemed to make the most sense because you can almost see it from anywhere. It's huge. Uh, and having that at the back of here, I thought about putting it in the members club and it just seemed a bit weird. Um, but you, I don't know. You guys let me know. I, it is a bit authoritative, which might not fit the theme of the city too much. I don't know. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it for now either way. Uh, I love the one at the back of the members club, though. I think that one looks great. Uh, so just to, yeah, show this area off really briefly, if we just take a little zoom out here, we can kind of see the overall layout for people that actually want to copy it. Some people were saying they wanted to try and mimic this type of thing. Uh, so I've got a town hall covering all of those buildings. I've got another town hall covering all of these. We've actually got the same item or same character presiding over both of these town halls, and that is Arik Lisowski, I think, the architect. Uh, so it affects investor and obrero residences, income per house 10%, and attractiveness too. Now, I'm not really, I don't really care about the income, but the attractiveness I actually like just because we're trying to build up that attractiveness in future to unlock more mo uh, policies for the palace. Uh, it's kind of a tongue twister saying that. Uh, but apart from that, anyway, so that's, that's the two basic areas there. Then we also have the members club, which I showed. I have got the gas-fired power plant, so no railways needed in this area. And every house has full coverage of power. Uh, just, I think a couple down here don't. Yeah, it just kind of starts to run out as it gets just a little bit further down onto these, the extremities of some of these areas. But we could just sort that out with another power plant in the future. Or if we get an item, maybe that gives power, it does something else. Uh, we can see about that. Then we have our bank here. This is the phone boxes I was kind of talking about in the previous episode as well. A lot of people's making calls. We have the anarchy billboard out there. <laughs> um, trying to tear, take down Wall Street in a way. And then just some farmers markets and things like that. So we'll go for a walk a little bit later, like I said in the episode. Now to catch people up on what's been going on. A lot of time has actually passed. And that's because I wanted to uh, let time pass so we could get that extra clay deposit thing. And that's just happened now. So the next major discovery I'm going to get is the campus extension permit. I want to bring our scholars up to 7,000. That's one of the goal I have uh, to do. And that allows us to have every single item, uh, building in the game in terms of production buildings and every single good in exchange. So let's get it. We will obtain a new campus permit. And while I'm here, let's just go get the... Whoops. Let's just go get the field of research and just activate one of these. It doesn't matter. Just spend the research while we're here. I've actually got all maritime technologies now. And I'm working on getting all maritime uh, characters as well, I think. Uh, now, apart from that, I haven't really done too much between episodes. One thing I was doing while that 90 minutes was sort of counting down was I essentially offloaded every single trade union item we had here. Because, you know, there's basically no production here. Uh, there's only one trade union. It's this one here that's giving us some stuff from the vineyard. So, with that in mind, I brought all of the stuff down to Lusk uh, so we could really figure out how we want to lay this place out. Uh, so we'll be getting to that in just a minute, and then I sent some of them off to the New World as well, where we're also going to be building. Uh, so one thing I just want to do really quickly, and it's just going to be a bit random, is add in some apple trees. Because um, a few people mentioned in the comments that our previous vineyard had it, and they looked quite good. And I agree, and I do kind of miss them. So let's see if they would look nice as well.
Because I think that might be part of the reason it looks so industrialized and less natural is because there's no trees or anything like that. Nothing really breaking it up. And then the tractors are obviously very heavy industry. Um, so let's just see. So farmers, apple tree. So just slam them in. And I think it just breaks the place up and makes it look a little bit nicer. I don't really care about the efficiency of uh, cutting away modules. It's fine. Is that it? I think that's basically it. Yeah, I don't know about you, but me personally, I think it looks better already. Probably do um, a couple on this side as well. Maybe I'll just fill in one spot. There we go. Alright, cool. There we go. Just a little bit. Actually, yeah. One out here would be nice as well. Screw the efficiency. Yeah, I said it. Oh, but darn, you can just add more modules at the back. Shut up! <laughs> oh, actually, I do need to have 130 or 231 to make that symbol go away. I will at least try to make that symbol go away. There we go. Alright, cool. Is this one the same now? Needs 231, so I have to get rid of one tree. Get rid of that one. Alright, I think the area looks a little bit better now as well. Very loud though, with all the tractors and stuff. I feel like I'm shouting over it. So, out in this area, I plan on basically doing what we've got on this side, but on that side. Uh, except, instead of having three out, I'll probably just have two. So, these blocks of six will sort of be turned almost sideways, if you will. Do we actually have four extra houses we could build right now? Oh, apparently we do. And then we're getting five more, so we'll be able to build nine more. Oh, nice. Yeah, we'll be able to fill this area right up uh, in the future. So, I guess we could just start doing that right now, really quickly. Is I know that I'm going to need this. It's going to have to come out to about here. Actually, I guess I will have to see where the houses go and then design the roads to fit around them. Yeah, I'll leave it. Don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, so, one last thing I need to catch up on before we actually get to proper gameplay is um, this island here. The island of Nall. Now, Nall was designed as a fun, a fun island. The idea being that with the World Class Reefer, which is a ship that's good at traveling between regions, I would queue the World Class Reefer to come up drop something off here and send it back out there. So that 90% of the time the World Class Reefer is moving, it's moving more, quote unquote, optimally between regions, right? Where it moves fastest. Now I had said before I did that, this is not the most efficient way of doing things. An airship is better, you know, a regular ship with multiple items on it is better. Um, but I just want to bring this up really quickly. This isn't, as you can clearly tell by now, <laughs> you should be able to tell, an efficient playthrough. I'm not trying to min-max anything. Uh, I'm not trying to purposefully play bad, but I'm not designing cities around, you know, town halls. I'm not designing really anything around any modifiers or anything like that or trying to build massive cities. I don't really plan on building another investor house ever unless I really need influence or something like that. Uh, so that's that's just the way I plan on playing. The reason for that is, well, it's, there's a couple of reasons. I don't want to get sidetracked here too much. The reason I bring this up is because people in the comments lately over the last few episodes, they've been totally respectful and very nice about it, but people are saying like, oh, you're not being very efficient with X, Y, or Z, or it seems like, you know, you've hit the limit of your skill in terms of what you can do and stuff. And it's like, well, I'm not trying to play efficiently. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying that. I don't want to. People were saying, why don't you fill all the gaps with houses? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. I'll probably build giant parks and, and things like that to fill the gaps between districts. Uh, and try to make it look as natural as possible. This is a playthrough where I'm trying to play in a way where I think the game looks nice. And do I'm still doing everything you can do in the game. I still have investors. All the demands are met. I'm getting scholars. I want to get all the scholars' demands met. But, you know, that's kind of it. I'm not a record builder. I don't want to be one. I'm not trying to be one. Now, if I really applied myself, I'm sure I could be way more efficient. For instance, if I was designing a city to be efficient, I'd basically just go with the town hall, build just a block of houses out in an even radius around each one, and then, you know, optimally lay out where the power plants are going to go and stuff like that, right? You could build a total grid map city, and obviously you would do that out in the big place everyone does that, which is the giant flat terrain of Crown Falls. So, I don't, I don't mean to sound, if I do sound, passive-aggressive or anything. Like I said, the comments have been very 
nice in terms of how they've brought it up. No one's been like, oh, you suck or anything like that. People have been pretty friendly, but I just want to set the expectation. I'm sorry if that's going to disappoint a lot of people, but I just don't plan on building anything that I absolutely don't need to um, in terms of what I want to do in the game, because I'm just not one of those players that likes seeing numbers tick up. I'm just, I just don't care. You know, I've beaten the AI. I beat the hard AI. I have money. Money's fine. I've done everything you can do in the game. We're searching every item. We're building scholars up to get every single good they have. Everyone else has every single good they have. I've let the other AIs, you know, live on islands because, you know, because I could have taken them, but I decided, like, to make the game more interesting by leaving them. You know what I mean? Like, so, to bring up efficiency at this point, it's just kind of a joke because I haven't, I haven't been trying, nor have I ever said, to try and do things efficiently. It is, every now and then I will ask for stuff. Like, for instance, when I asked about fur out here, I was like, oh, how many do you think you can fit in? And people were like, you can fit, like, up to 16. That was quite interesting. I'm probably not going to do it, just because, like I said, I'm, I'm not trying to play that angle. Um, and there's just two different types of players in this world. Those who get that, and those who just kind of don't, right? Some people love seeing numbers tick up, getting the maximum amount of everything. That's quote-unquote the point of the game. But I would say it's not. You know, I want to build a city that kind of looks like a city in the 1800s. Try to make a city that feels alive. Um, while also doing everything you can do in the game. Like, making sure I'm not failing at the gameplay. Uh, which I'm not. So, hopefully people kind of understand that and get that. Like I said, there's no way of mentioning this without sounding sort of bent out of shape or passive-aggressive or something like that. But I'm, I'm really not. I love this playthrough. And I really, really enjoy doing it. Um, but I just want people to know that, set that expectation at the beginning that this is not an efficient playthrough, you know, just, it never has been. I, I also, I'm, ne I'm never going to play any game that way, because I just don't enjoy playing games that way. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. So, something that I'm going to be working on doing now is going over to the new world and actually getting cotton up and running. So, if we have a look at our statistics screen really quickly and we look at population and we select all islands. By the way, some people ask, why don't you select all, is all islands before? The reason is... The reason I don't select all islands when I'm looking at cer certain goods and production goods is mainly because of Cape Trelawney. Largely, that place is just segmented out on its own. And uh, they make things over there that we make over in the old world, but I don't link the trade or anything like that. It's just because I went to Cape Trelawney just for the variety of it, but I actually really don't... I'm just not a fan of that area. <laughs> I like the diving and I like Old Nate, but I wouldn't care if I never had like one island over there, you know? That's just me, because I just don't like that giant island. It's too, it's just too easy um, and too uninteresting to me. But like I said, that's just different, different uh, types of player. Um, so, but the reason I clicked this on anyway, is just to show you the population that we've got going right now. So it looks like we actually dipped in investors for a moment. I wonder why that is. Oh, I think I, um, right before the episode, I was changing out an item to showcase something. Yeah, I was having a look at the trade union items. That might be it. Hopefully that is it. Um, although, oh no, it looks like invest uh, engineers dipped as well. So I must be slightly short on something. I'd have to check what that is. Uh, but anyways, I was going to say that everything's really, really consistent. So I guess it's not. I guess there's a little bit more to be done there. Uh, but scholars is the one that's definitely going to keep fluctuating. And that's because elders are fluctuating. And they're fluctuating because they're lacking cotton. Um, so I'm going to kind of work on this area now and sort out cotton for them. And uh, I'm just trying to think, is there anything else then? Yeah, that we have the thing ticking around in the background. We're going to build those extra houses after we do this and then see what the scholar is going to need. And then that's going to be kind of everything that they, they're going to need uh, in terms of scholar residences. Uh, so let's begin. So over here, we have four cotton plantations. I've delivered the stuff we need a few episodes ago, but I forgot to build it for steam motors and the like. Um, and that's going to allow us to basically motorize these farms. Mechanize these farms, sorry, not motorize. So I'm just going to cut them there. Anyway. Alright, so. I think, yeah, the way I'm going to do it is basically have it start somewhere on this road here. And then a gap of two. Pretty much between each one. Something like that. Four should still be plenty, I, I think. Hola. And we're going to start putting down the tractors. Whoops. The land has to be prepared. All right, nice. So I've already got a fuel station over here that's supplying these farms. So we're just going to basically... It should go the whole way if I maybe pave these roads. Let's see. 
I hope so. These roads are a bit of a nightmare. Something like that? Let's see. Let's see if it reaches. Yes, it does. And then some. Huh, that's interesting. Alright, uh, cool. So those are the cotton farms. The trade routes are already set up for all of this, so I feel like all we have to do is just build them. And they will come. And it should fix our little issues we're having there. This the cotton is used for the candles uh, and the lanterns back in the in the Land of Lines and Tabarine. In case people are wondering what uh, good is it's used for. Alright, is that good? There we go. Is that... Did I do that right? 216, yes. So, what I'm hoping to be able to do over here is actually specialize a bit more in cigars. You know, the items I've chosen to specialize in are gold, soap, and steel. Just because I think, again, I think they're fun. It's kind of a fun thing to specialize in. Soap is just a bit of a meme because we specialized it in, in it so early on so that we could sell it to Eli Bleakworth. Uh, I just realized I need to leave that gap there. So that's kind of a legacy thing that I'm keeping. I've just noticed that there's a a wagon there that's just completely lost. Alright, are we good? Of course. Ship constructed. I'm also building ships to replace the old clippers that we have. Time has passed. Enough time has passed now that I don't think we need them anymore. Or a lot of them. And uh, people who caught me up in the in the comments in the last episode about the trade routes at Null, I have fixed that. Um, I forgot to actually pick up the coal, so that's added now. And I've also added more ships to that route. So I can, I can show that really quickly as well. I'm just going to see how far over here can we go. I want to kind of fill up that entire area. Something like that. Alright, so those are now four cotton plantations motorized or mechanized with their tractors now doing their thing absolutely loving life out there i'm sure they are uh right so cigar factories i'm just trying to think what's going to go in front of these so they need to drop off their cotton into these buildings cotton mills and this we actually have a trade union here so i guess ideally we want the trade union to cover all four of them somewhere like that and maybe not as far up i'll try to make this area look nicer then after i've got things in place uh, speaking of making things look nicer, there's a vote at the moment on the Anno Union website, which is to vote for what kind of next decoration pack that you want in terms of DLC for them to do. It's quite cool that I don't know many companies that actually put up votes for, like, what DLC should we make. So that's kind of nice. Um, there's five different options. One of them is actually a New World ornament pack, which is actually my vote. Um, but it doesn't look like it's winning. I'm glad. At least it's not any busier. But there's another one, which is like the pedestrian pack, which would probably be my second vote, which is winning. And that's basically like, um, it basically entails things. I mean, we don't know exactly what's in them, but it talks about how a pedestrian pack for the old world would actually like allow for little mini tunnels and little overpass walkways and stuff like that. So just, it's all, it's all just ornaments <clears throat> and decoration, but, um. I, the reason I voted New World is because there isn't really many ornaments for the New World, but there's also not a lot of space, so I can see why people maybe don't want anything for here. Uh, another one was like variety of houses, so having like the same classes of houses, but having them look different for the Old World, so that's kind of an interesting one. There's a, two that were kind of out there. One was like a Gothic-themed thing. It's like an Eldritch Gothic-themed pack, and then another was like circuses. Um... Not a big fan of those. I'm not a big fan of, like, Eldritch. I mean, Eldritch theme is kind of cool, but I don't know why it would fit in this game. And then Circuses is more of, a, like, a kind of thing that I think should have its own building. Like a zoo or a botanical garden. Like, an actual theme park that you can do something with, rather than it just being a set of ornaments. That's just how I feel about it. I feel that way about the amusement pack as well. Anyways. Um, right, so we've got those four lined up. I think now, what we've got here, we have Ferris al Sarami, the 50% productivity bonus. What we could also add in is the 35% productivity and reduction of workforce here. Potentially. Um, we could just do those, or we could do something that's a bit more specialized. Cigar factories. Instead of wood veneers, the building uh, process is timber. We also have Alexander Hancock for number of modules and productivity for farms. Now, workforce of these is going to be tiny anyway. 
<laughs> That's literally one Yornalero is working this. That's weird. Um, so I don't think I really need that. Let's go with Alexander Hancock. And just increase the productivity like nobody's business out of this place. So it's 50%, productivity 80%, the number of modules. And then what else could we get? Lumberjack huts, lumberjack huts. Uh, food production, drinks production. Got some interesting things here, but nothing. Coffee roasters. Substitute workforce for bomb. I guess I'll probably leave it like that. But the issue here is this is a great agricultural trade union, you know? It doesn't really do anything else if we just leave it like that. I mean, it gives us productivity to production buildings 50% no matter what they are. He only affects... He actually produces potatoes as well, which is hilarious. Um... He affects the productivity of cotton. I don't even know if I need this much cotton, to be quite honest. Maybe it would be better to just leave it with the coffee roaster. Because I could put the, you know, the, or not the coffee roaster, the uh, cigar factories. Could put the cigar factories around it. I could also add in another one. We've got plenty of influence. I'm just trying to think, like, what's, like, maybe the best way to do this? Should I have this somewhere over here and then replace this area with, like, more farms? Would that be a better idea? And move the cotton out that way altogether? Um, we've also got one here, for instance. Now this is, we have all the coffee roasters kind of affected as well. Hmm. Coffee roasters and plantations here for to what is this affecting? Coca, coca, coffee, cotton. Oh, so it affects coffee, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like maybe Alexander Hancock might be better suited out here. And then we can get more coffee. And cotton is probably okay on its own. Yeah, I think so. Let's just go with that anyway. We've actually got more coffee than I can even consume. People are also saying like, oh, why don't you make the um, get the permit for making coffee back in the old world? Because unless you're building like literally like 100,000 engineers, coffee's not that bad, you know? Oh, God. Um, sorry, what has happened there? What did I do? That That's... Oh, I turned off the... God damn, I always do that. There we go. So she needs to stay there. Well, she only needs to stay there around this building. Okay, yeah. Alright, alright, I've got it. <laughs> so yeah, I'll take you off for now. Coffee simulator. I'm going to pause the coffee buildings. And we're going to move them. Out here. So... So that's for the coffee roaster. And then... Maybe I can get rid of this. And pop in the... Cigar person. There we go. Okay, so basically, sorry for taking so long with that. Fel Ferris Al Sarami, 50% productivity. Then we have this person, it affects everything. This person then is going to affect just coffee roasters and substitute the workforce from Obrero to Hornolero, or whatever you say it. And then we have the cigar factory person, which is going to then change what the cigar factory takes in. So instead of veneers, we're going to just take in timber. So the great thing with this is I have a bunch of veneer buildings, like five or something like that. Just get rid of all of them. Now we're just going to turn wood straight into timber. It takes up much less space. Is under so another thing I can stop is let's just shift F all of those. So just pause all of those buildings for now as well. So that means that now there's much greater capabilities for farms out this way in, ter in terms of moving modules and things like that. Um, so maybe I'll try to add in some cotton or something like that, maybe, as well. If we can surround them and then move these, this block out of here. It's just that we're really close up against the coast down there as well. So it gets a bit messy. Alright, really quickly, gotta go back to the old world. Let's actually get stepping now. Gotta move this. Stand to attention for the boss. Move that clay deposit. Gonna basically move it out here. In line with the other one. Great. And we finally cleared that area now. That's been a long time coming. How much time do we have? Oh, I've got plenty of time. Alright, cool. So basically, yeah, I'm still keeping the clay pits going. Just move them out here and have a third one there. There's only three on this island. Now, it increases cost by 5,000 each time. I was just looking at the one in the New World. It might be a good idea to replace that one eventually as well, you know? So that might be the one I get next. Yeah. I think that would make sense. Alright, so let's get to work. So I'm happy with all these four, that's fine. 
Uh, the next thing then is going to be the cigar factories. So cigar factories can move up. Looks like they can just about fit in actually, which is good. What way do they face? Okay. Something like that, so they face out on the road. Cool. I think I've only got the two, but it would be really nice to add in a third now eventually. We've got a lot more workforce to work with since pausing these things. We cannot catch the yeah, so I can get rid of these now. Still. One, two. That's a lot of buildings. Actually, let me just check. How many... What was the workforce of those by default? Uh, veneers. Where do we find veneers? It was 100. Wow. Now, I think I was reducing that a little bit, but it's good. I mean, that's a big saving. Uh, so, the cotton, cotton comes into these cotton mills here to produce cotton fabric. We could stack them in here as well, get a little bit extra. We need Whoops. Raw materials. Yeah. These have been buffed also. I might end up moving that though. And these can kind of move out as well. So I'm going to need timber yards to help satiate the demand of timber now for this. So it's a construction material. The demand is 8 tons per minute. We're currently making 2. So let's see what we get when we add a couple extra in. Something like that. And maybe a road going up here. I love to learn more song. Let's test that out. So now we're making 14. Oh, wow. We don't even need that many at all. Ten. Well, let me just pause this one and see. Okay, so I'll leave this one on, and I'll probably get rid of any of the other ones we have in the island elsewhere. Because that one's not being buffed, and I don't think I've got another one anywhere else. Yeah. Alright, nice. So what are we up to now? 8 to 8. Perfect. Look at that. Alright. Good. Looking good so far. Just gonna move this out of the way. It looks like we can maybe squeeze other things in there. So, as long as that building is lit up. Wow, it's lit up even all the way to there. That trade union. I can't believe that's covered. That must be right on the edge. So, what would be nice here is if I leave a gap, they'll take the timber straight from this building straight into that one without having to hit a, uh, what do you call it, any kind of um, storage. Okay, looking a little bit better, a little bit tighter. Uh, I have to figure out where they're going to go. This is also a cotton mill. This is going to be the bombin weavers, which we're probably going to need more of considering I think the scholars use them. But we'll just leave it here for now until I can figure out what they're going to be needed for. Uh, do I need to leave it like that? I mean, that is an incredible reduction of space, getting those items. That was really good. Um, so, yeah. So, now we have to actually make sure the coffee roasters have a place, right? So, that's the big one. So, coffee roasting. To be affected by her. Return to your posts. Now, are you in range of this? Yes. Just about. Okay, good. Of wide blue horizons. Apply within. So there's another one. And hopefully I can fit a third one in. I think I can. Yes. Excellent. So three right there. Let's turn them on. Check our production rates and see like what the deal is. It's every person's right to change. Because now mind. they're being covered by increased productivity, reduced workforce. And more increased product. Actually, no, she's not going to affect them. But this one will and this one. So they're getting 80% bonus. 50 and 30. So 180%. I don't know what they were running over here before. Let me check that. So they would have been getting... Oh, I think the same. Oh, maybe a little bit more of that. 15%. Yeah. That's okay, though. All right, let me just check. Those other buildings are paused. Actually, we need to give them a route out just if they want to count in the statistics screen, so consumer goods, coffee, uh, agricultural products, B. 
beans, 32. All right, let's turn on all islands for this one. Go to consumer goods and go to coffee. Demand is 27, we're producing 11. Okay, so we're way short, but it's all right. Just trying to think, it might look a little nicer. Kind of encroaching on the town now a little bit, that's okay. Competitor's island so yeah, based on the productivity, I guess that means I need the same amount of houses. Or the same amount of coffee buildings, right? Because the productivity is actually getting a little less. So if anything, it's going to be worse. Is there a strike? I can't believe it. We haven't had a strike in a very long time. I hear it, but I don't see it. Oh, we've also disconnected... Well, we. I've disconnected all the roads. How's oh, a strike there? Maybe it's because they don't have any rum. Have I disconnected everything? These say that they're not connected. This isn't... Yeah, they say they're not connected. Oh, yeah. There. That should fix it. They're probably just unhappy. Because they ran out of stuff for a while. Police are on the way. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Stamp them down. Ah, this isn't in the radius. That's a shame. I have to move that. Okay. Maybe these could uh, fit in here then. And then on the outsides of the radius, we'll pop in the uh, warehouses and get them all like lined up a bit nicer as well. Cool. So what is it? Two more? Three more. the required permit to expand the campus awesome let's go check that out okay so to expand the campus let's grab it collect the discovery and then so that should be enough houses now I think let's see if we need to get more oh yeah we need one more one more research for that 6,000 it costs this time. Alright, so they're all active now. The bomb and weavers are active. I think it'd be kind of nice to see on the way I've done this, the way it's offset, this road needs to come out here. But I was going to say it'd be kind of nice if there was just a big fence wall blocking off the industrial area from the housing. But these guys don't have a way around unless I cut a household here or something. I suppose I could, Worse. thinking about it. We've got plenty of um, excess population now. So yeah, something like this would be fine. Maybe put some chairs or a park or something there. When it comes to factories, I do like to have them all kind of even. Now, which way, which way is the entrance? Oh, it's this side, so I have to turn them around. Uh, yep, cool. Full output storage. We need someone to come pick this coffee up. We're up to 25 now. I think we needed 27 in total. So it's just that last building that we need. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's just a bit of a shame because this is kind of in the way now. So I'm just going to get rid of these this fence for a bit. So what are these? These are the, the tortilla makers. And for you? they should be able to fit in here. So yes, good. I guess ideally a fit like this. Well, that's a, a busy trade union. <laughs> Okay. All right, now basically just need to put back in these um, warehouses so that they can actually deliver their goods where they need to go and then connect the roads back up because I've disconnected the island again. Uh, 
let's see, so where's the extremities of that radius? It's about there. Okay, I'll just come down this way then. Alright, we are reconnected, uh, so these are missing goods, just regular wood. So we must- oh, I was gonna say we were low on the island, but I don't think so, yeah, we should be fine. Damn, doesn't quite fit. It'll fit if I close the gap here, but it would be nice to have something out that way in future. Although, actually, I just added in, they... Wait a second. Was this all for nothing? Or am I an idiot? Oh, I'm an idiot. It's okay. I was going to say, does Alexander Hancock not affect this place? He affects down here, because we put him in here. I forgot about that. Actually, does he not? No, it looks like he doesn't. I am an idiot. <laughs> All old world crop farms. Oh my god, all of that for, in a way, nothing. Oh, I'm so sorry <laughs> if you guys are screaming that one at home. But it's fine. I mean, this still works out better, so it's it's fine. Uh, we can get some other items to pop, pop in there for the uh, crop farms. Dun, 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 dun. Just trying to think. You want to keep it on the outskirts, some, something like that. There we go. As big as it gets, essentially. Alright, we're basically out of materials now. Okay, I hope that I've done that alright. The only thing I'd be worried about now is how many logs are we going to be taking on. Actually, I just saw something else. I am debuffing the sawmill production. There we go. So now we have more than enough with just those two. Yeah, up to a potential of 12. We only need 8. Uh, my only concern is, I think I reduced that because I'd be worried about the raw material of the logs. No, we're... Oh, yeah, look at that. We're producing up to 23 and we're consuming 12. So that's good. It looks like I've sorted that stuff largely out. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, anyway, the, the main reason for this change at all up here was for... It wasn't for coffee or anything like that. It was just to get more cotton out and just use the land a bit more efficiently. So I'm pretty happy with how I've done that. So just really quickly, instead of leaving this place kind of derelict. Gonna now make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, so yeah, let's just go with something that kind of separates the worker area. Oh, I didn't even realize we have one right there. What a waste, am I right? Yeah, I can just leave it like that. That's fine. Little places to cut through every now and then where it makes sense. You know, it looks like it makes sense there. Kind of makes sense here. Cool. Alright, look at that. Population-wise, we saved a bunch. And I think this place is still operating at the same... Pretty much at the same rate. I mean, they're full of beans, quite literally. Uh, and yeah, we have the Arborist and Ferris is still active. I need to remember what I took out in this in this person's place, but I can't quite remember. I guess what I could also do is just reduce the workforce or increase the productivity further. There's actually some stuff we have here for farms. Just I, What I'd love is something in this thing that just says, oh, actually, we can type. Maybe that'll work. Farm? Um, coffee? Plantation. Oh, there we go. So that does work. That's, that's great. I love it when I say, like, oh, man, it should have this thing, and it's actually right there. So, yeah, maybe I didn't have any other items then. I thought I had other items just for particular crop farms, but I guess not. I'll just check one last time. Crop farms. No, I guess not. Okay, I thought I had nothing specific for here, I guess. So productivity, 35% or work... I, I'll reduce the workforce because it seems like the product... I mean, it was abs we took away basically no workforce. 10 people. Okay, we'll do the productivity one then. Let these get ramped up to something extreme. 252 out of 235. So it does look like I lost some modules that I had otherwise in those ones, it seems. 
but I think it'll be fine. Uh, let me just check. So I don't need this anymore, do I? These two coffee roasters? Let me just check. Consumer goods, all islands. We're currently producing... Oh, I do. I need one more. Okay. Maybe a row of trees or something over there, if we can get some. We are keen to get started again. So that's one, two, three, four, five coffee roasters in total. We can get rid of that old one. And then maybe later I'll come back out and update this area to have to be weird, less weird, and uh, to make more sense with the coffee, uh, with the plantations and stuff like that, I guess. Yeah, alright. I mean, not a very efficient way of doing it, like I say, all the time, but uh, I'm pretty happy with it anyway. Oh, sorry, it's five, six, seven, eight coffee roasters in total. And they're all being buffed. Buffed like nobody's business. And uh, we've got room for another thing in there. Maybe the fence could actually come down that way. Maybe in future that would make more sense. Let's do that. Yeah, so maybe there's room for another building there. We are out of room. Probably room for multiple. Maybe the bomb and weaver. Ugh. Yeah, works pretty well. You can maybe just slide the buildings over and create a, a road that leads down. Actually, you wouldn't even need to. You could just add a road. Does that work? Let me just test that. I'm pretty sure it does. But if I just did this, and then I added a road here. That building doesn't need to connect to the rest of the, anything, right? It just does its thing now on its own. Hmm. And now it's getting the 50% productivity bonus. We're going to consume more cotton fabric and more felt, but we're also producing way more now that everything's in this in range of here. So with all of that, I wonder how much... The whole goal of this was to be able to produce an excess of raw cotton. Uh, which we are definitely doing. So that's good. And that means that that's going to get taken to Mbesa. Mbesa. And uh, they should be fine. Yeah, so there's none here at the moment. But we should be producing more than enough to allow them to get their candles. Oh, my game's getting quite laggy these days. Alrighty. Uh, so, research is full. Let's start getting just a few more extra fields of research. Just identify some items, I guess. I'm going with the industrial experts first. Are we to invest in maritime it's getting quite expensive now. So can't really go more than that. Uh, be good to run an expedition. Or ex exhibition, sorry. Let's do... Architectural Marvels. I'm short on some fountains, actually. So we need champagne, which we've got enough of. Coffee, which we've got too much of. Felt, which we've got loads. And why do we have so much? We just do. I think we brought some in a long time ago. Um, goulash, which we don't consume, but we have 181 here, so that's perfect. And then, yeah, way more than we need. So we've got everything, right? Got absolutely everything. Excellent. So it's just a matter of time. That'll build up, and then... Our current attraction is at 3696. Should build all the way up. Do the clay pits affect attraction negatively? No, but the oil does. Okay. Something I could do if we want to just raise attraction is just stick things in here. We already have these items in, so that's why I'm not using them right now. Actually, actually the angel wing lotus I didn't have in, so that's nice. That's just, those are just temporary at the back, and in fact, the whole kind of layout actually is. I know that I like this tree in the center, but there's there's variants of this where you have this massive tree, so I'd like to have that and maybe a few around it or something. Um, so that'd be pretty cool in the future, hopefully. I'm leaving a lot of blank space out here because I think this is where I'll probably end up putting tourism. Uh, okay, next thing then for me is going to be over on the island of Lusk. So just really quickly, I thought I would show that trade route going from the Old World to the Arctic. So there's now five ships on it, is it? That's the wrong one. 
uh, this one, the coal supply. So Durham coal, Yorkshire, Lancashire, Northern coal, and Leicestershire. That's supposed to be kind of Northumbria. Those are some famous, sort of famous anyway, coal areas. What's wrong with this now? The resource can't be loaded as the storage is empty. The storage on Knoll is empty. I don't believe it. What? Did I have I don't understand. <laughs> The storage is empty. Surely you can load 150, though, because there's 180. I have a ship coming up to it right now. That ship should fill up. Let's just speed time up. Yeah. No, it's working. I see no issue here. Okay. Maybe I'm blind to something really obvious. I don't know. Seems to be working just fine. And that the Arctic should be fine as well, right? The Arctic should have plenty of coal. I'll just check. A ship here. The crane. Yorkshire coal is actually just drops them off. Can't even drop off everything. It's waiting. That's the going price for contraband. Yeah. Perfect. I see no issue. I see no issue. Other than I've got too many ships on that route. But um, other than that, it seems fine. We've got plenty of excess ships here in the sitting around waiting to be given something to do. Alright, so let's have a look at our Docklands. Let's see, so gold is actually, should be steadily climbing. Uh, now I mentioned before I have an Excel document for this and I've improved it since I showed it on my stream um, the other day. It can, it's now more, what's the word, dynamic. I can kind of add things in, it'll, it basically it's just like almost mimicking the game completely now. Um, so I think in terms of, the only things that were a problem for me were coal and iron. They were running out. Now I've seen to be running out of copper and zinc, so I'm gonna add those onto the roots as well. I don't really know how I got away with not having as much copper and zinc for so long, because I haven't changed the amount of brass smelteries that I'm using, but we're definitely lower on copper than we've ever been. So there's copper here, so I'll just build that. That should be powered as well. No? I thought it would be powered with this power plant right here. Oh, are you kidding me? Hmm. I could make it reach if I could. Well, this wall looks like a disaster anyway. So let's just get rid of this wall. I'll have to redo this area at some point. But that should um, that should give it the power it needs. Yep. Okay, anyways. Is this powered? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> it looks like it's been powered from, since before, though. Um, right, so there's copper there. The other copper is across the river. A bit more of a contentious one to upgrade, but I think I'll do it anyway. If I build a road out here... Maybe just tuck this in, I don't know, somewhere over there. Just want to keep some of those trees up if I can. Uh, and I'll probably end up putting some sort of, yeah, ornaments or trees there eventually. God, it's so loud when I zoom into that area. I think it looks great though now. I think it looks a lot better. I, I do agree with the um, tractors that they're, they're a little much, but to be honest, I actually kind of need them. Uh, for the amount that we're consuming. If we look at grapes real quick, it's actually just ten we're actually not producing quite as much as we are consuming now. So I probably have to fix that at some point as well. I guess chipping away at the productivity has come back to haunt me. Um, but there's no reason we couldn't have grapes on another island as well in the future. In fact, I made a route, if I'm not mistaken, just for grapes. It used to be um, a charter route, but I've made it its own thing. Yeah, so now, as part of the scholar imports, when we go back... So when, when I drop off everything that the scholars um, usually consume, uh, when I drop everything off, we drop off as well. We pick up grapes. God, I don't know why. Yeah, there, here we are. Swords. Dropping off all the consumer goods for the scholars, picking up all the grapes that we can, and then going back down. I want to do this more and more often where I can on roots, double up on the things, because there's so many going back and forth, and they're often just coming back empty, um, when it would be a lot more efficient just to actually... 
drop off the things that we don't need, uh, either toss them overboard or just bring them back and unload them for a while and then make a second trip with something else. That's the way we do it in the Arctic and that worked out very well. So when's this, uh, when's this thing done? What are you lacking? Coffee's fine. Yep, they're all still fine. It's just taking a while to load them all up. All right, cool. So back to focus out on the Docklands. I think I'm, it's now time for us to get rid of some of these buildings that I can do without for a while. So the ones that are paused, I'm going to start getting rid of. This was clockmakers. They're gone. Jewelers, gone. Gone. We have an extra gold smith here to produce more gold to allow us to trade even more stuff. And this has been covered by a trade union as well. Faris Al-Sarami yet again. Human Incarnate and the Fortunate. Um, I don't know if I've got anything specific for the gold. But what I want to do now is start actually making this area look kind of nicer. Because it's a bit of a disaster zone. Um, just going to get rid of these walls and things. This area is so loud, I'm actually, because I can barely hear anything, I have to turn it down. It, it might go quite quiet for you, but it's just, it is too loud for me. <laughs> okay, that's a bit better. Alrighty, anyways, so in this situ in this area, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different uh, furnaces. Furnaceae. <laughs> and if I move them over, it might look a bit better this way. Now there's another, there's room for another one of these. So let's just uh, blueprint that one in for future. Another smelter if we need it. There isn't any more room for furnaces. This is pretty much full the entire time. It's kind of a waste having it in here. So I might take that out of this area. And use it somewhere else at a later date. Oh, we actually have two. Didn't realize. Uh oh. Let's get rid of um, the worst case scenario. We will all be absolutely behind you. That's fine. That keeps our rates more consistent as well. Alright, get rid of all that goulash that's no longer needed. What was this needed for? The cannery, that's gone. What do we have here? Sewing machine factory. Now it said we were low on... Oh yeah, we're low on um, just regular wood. I might get rid of these and import that. We actually have room on the contracts to add another one. And we can also add a few more, I'm sure, with time. But yeah, there's another contract, the optional contract here. Maybe we'll just bring in wood. Instead, let's see how much we need. Uh, raw material wood. We're consuming 24 tons per minute. Uh, so let me just break out the calculator really quickly. That's 24. It takes 23 minutes for the ship to arrive here. So 23 times 24. 552 is what we need to bring in. It's actually quite a lot. So maybe I could see about adding gold. 552. That's 24 gold. If I check my um, document, it's like saying 38, isn't it? Hmm. I guess I need to add in that extra building and then I can add everything up. So yeah, I'll, I'll add it there for now. So this is 92 Sanga Cow. Okay, let's do 92 Sanga Cow. Oh, actually, you know what? We have extra steel. I should just probably do it for the steel. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? Rather than the one that's... Uh, well, would it? Because gold is tier one. Yeah, let's try it with gold. Okay. Now, what was the number? It was 552. Very specific. So it's only 24 extra gold. It's not that crazy. Turning on this building... Start the machine. ...will increase the output of our gold... Uh, so it's an intermediate. Gold is now up to 20 per minute. So again, if I just open up my thing, 20 per minute at times, so 20 times 23, 20 times 23 is 460. It's 460. We were at 391. That's how much we were making. So now I'll just pop in 460 plus the 180 that we get from the trader route. That means we have a total allowance within the Docklands of 640. So when I add in the extra thing now, this, I know you can't see this, it's a bit weird me doing all this in Excel, but it, hopefully me verbalizing it kind of makes sense. Last thing I need to add in, so that's 24 to 552. So 24, 552. 
And then my little calculation needs to just factor in the new contract. There we go. So that should leave us with an excess of 43 gold. So basically, every 23 minutes, we should be storing an excess of 43 gold, according to my calculations. What I haven't factored in or calculated at all is now we're going to also be consuming more coal and we're consuming more gold ore. So that's the last thing I just need to check against. So this is the gold ore is now at 20. So that's again 20 times 23. So that's 460 that we're consuming. That one I might have to look at in between episodes because I need to see. Oh, actually, no, I don't. We're only producing... Oh my god. So that's 18. Wow, that seems crazy. 18 times... 23. So 414 gold is what we need in Docklands. I currently have 184. This seems so wrong. Oh yeah, because, oh god, yeah, I'm not even factoring the fact that we bring some in. Right, uh, gold is an awkward one, so I'll have to just do that between episodes, otherwise I'll just stand, I'll sit here looking at my Excel sheet the whole time. It's not just about what we produce, because of course we're bringing some in from traders and stuff like that. Um, so I don't need to know the direct amount of ore to keep this afloat, I don't think. Maybe I do, I don't know, I'll have to check, I'm, I'm so confused now. I'll have to check. But anyway, coal coal is relatively straightforward. So coal, I can check. So coal, in Lusk, we need 77. So 77 minus the 24 that we produce on the island, right? So 77. Oh my god. Yeah, I seem to be just co totally confused now, out of my mind. I don't know why. This happens to me sometimes. It's the, it's the idea of like trying to talk and play the game and now I can't even like think about what I'm trying to think about. It's really weird. Um, because it all makes sense and that's why everything was consistent before but now nothing makes sense in my head. I just know that putting down an opening up an extra production building that consumes coal and ore means I'm going to have to increase the amount of coal I'm bringing in. And it's an interesting exchange because while adding another gold route, it means that, or gold contract, it means that the gold that we're trading to even bring in the coal is going to be more, potentially. But I'll just leave it the way it is now. I'll just check that between episodes. Once I clear my head, I'll, I'll figure it out, no problem. Um, but seeing as the World's Fair is open and running, I think we should go for our little walk around that area. And then the next episode, I'll probably maybe time-lapse beautifying this area and moving buildings closer together and pushing things in so that they're better covered by power and better covered by ta um, tr uh, trade unions. So... I know it's funny that at the beginning I said I don't, I'm not trying to be efficient or play super efficiently, but like I said, I'm not trying to also play inefficient, I'm not trying to do stupid things or anything like that. But beauty, I am trying to build like a pretty city. I, I even want to make this island look nice as well, as best as I can. So once I get things in place, then I'm going to start putting ornaments around it and trying to like make it look a little bit more interesting and seeing where we can even put uh, trees and things like that. I know, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, th what's interesting now is though I can actually largely start to turn these off those wood production buildings I don't know why that was so complicated I'm sorry for even taking so long at that adding in 552 which seems to be correct for 24 gold I now just have to think about like um yeah what the, what the offset number is going to be so that trade must have just happened did it yeah so we went down to 10 that's really good we didn't we just about had enough we just about had enough so that's awesome and that's just given us a huge whopping amount of wood. Yeah, in reserve. Nice. All right, cool. All right. Anyway, so let's have a look around our beautiful area of the investors. Let's go up to maybe 9 a.m. 9.40 a.m. can look quite nice. And this is on at the moment. We have a sumptuous architectural exhibition. So let's take our walk from right at the edge of the city here. It's very silent. <laughs> so this would be, I guess, the main road that enters into the... Uh, well, at least for now, actually, I suppose. One of the main areas that enters in. Sorry, actually, just one, th one thing. I have been thinking about what you could do. These angled buildings, if I had two of them angled with a road between like this as the main entrance that leads in, I'll probably end up doing that like somewhere in between these two things with a road going up or something. That, that could look quite cool. 
um, as the proper entrance into the city, but we'll see, we'll see. All right, so let's go for a little run. Oh, that's why I can't hear things. I turned down the SFX, that's what it was. I was wondering why I couldn't hear my footsteps. There we go. Alrighty, let's go for a little walk. Streets are looking busy today as well. Wow, again with the really high res billboards. So nothing too crazy at the first little entrance area here. This After this point is really where the place is actually designed. So we have our bank with all the little telephone boxes outside. I mentioned earlier on the episode, we have the Anarchy billboard trying to tear down Wall Street and the man trying to advertise against it, I guess. Funny that you'd have to use advertising to advertise against it, I guess. We now have the required permit to expand the campus. Nice. I might as well put those down right here at the end of the episode as well. Then we've got our little market area. Like I was saying, those steel fences wrap around the whole way with the canopies draping over them now. So it looks way more natural, especially at nighttime. It can look really, really good, I think. So this is kind of like a uh, McGrafton Street style street. If anyone who lives in Dublin, they'll know the uh, reference there. Busy markets and, and the like. As we work our way up, we have, at least turning this corner, we have where the t one of the town halls is. With some nice ornate gardens at the back. Like I said, this is subject to change, possibly, if we can think of better things to pop down. But it's kind of nice having the ornate gardens. I'll just stand still for a second so we can really soak in that area. If people would stop walking through me, geez, mind your own business. But yeah, I think it looks quite cool. We've got another little market stall kind of thing here. Still waiting to get another architectural billboard yoke uh, to pop there. Alright, so then opening out into the main plaza area, we can see obviously the World's Fair in the distance. If we were to walk up further that way, we come across the power plant actually, which is just there on the edge, right ahead of me. But we'll kind of open and in walk into the uh, plaza from the front. And maybe on the way out, we'll visit the members' club. So here we go, entering into the kind of World's Fair Plaza, I guess we could call it. And we have our lovely little broken fountain, which we can walk in between. Now, I noticed that you actually can't walk through the topiary garden. It's kind of annoying, unfortunately. So we have to walk around the edge. And we can see the advertisements then for what's going on, the sunken treasures, the botanical garden. I'll just take a little moment to look at the... Members Club, the bank behind us, our lovely statue of us. And all the people in their houses looking down on the exhibition. The people were saying these are obviously going to be high rises in the future. I mean, that would be the ideal, I suppose. Towering over our sort of central plaza here. Then we've got more billboards and advertisements about things that are happening. Sewing machines established 1830. How oh, can we not walk in that way? Uh, I can't. I'm too fat. I can walk in this way, though. Ugh. And then as we come out, we're into the more restaurant area now, while people are taking a break from what they've just seen. Getting their pizza and their bread, or whatever else. And of course, the Founder's Memorial uh, statue. And then uh, we can go walk right up into it. Loads of people are flooding in. I love being up here now, looking down on this area. I think it looks so cool, looking back on it like that. It would look amazing then to have the high-rises somewhere towering over there. You can actually see the palace from here as well. All right, in we go. Now, we know that this one is bugged. Allegedly, this bug has been fixed since I talked about it, so we'll see in the next update, I guess. All right, that's basically it. That is our plaza, our big plaza area. So I guess now, actually I'll probably leave it till the next episode. The next episode we're going to block out this area then for the next group of scholar households that we're going to use. And then we're going to be focused on Mbessa to try to bring up the... A competitor's island uh, bring up the things they need. So I guess at this point, you can either get another peer upgrade, which I'm pretty tempted to do, or a Great Eastern Permit. 
or we can move the third clay deposit for 20,000. Oh, so the first one was five, the second one was 10, and the third one is now 20. So that seems to be doubling. People said it just adds five every time. Someone said that in the comments, but that seems to be doubling. I don't think I'll be able to move another one after that. Because I can only go to 27, and even with all the scholars, I reckon I can only get to about 35,000, probably. So that might be the last one we could move. The third one on this island probably isn't as big a priority, seeing as it's just out there. But it would have been nice to get it in the same area. Hmm. Yeah, I'll skip doing that one just for now, as it's a bit too important, I think. Let's go with the Great Eastern Permit, then, so we can actually see what we need to make our own Great Easterns. Alright, sweet. Um, well, the music is actually taking me out just as it normally would, so I guess that's going to be the end of the episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.